ฝากกดติดตามและกดไลค์กดแชร์ CBN Thailand November 2011 Roseanne and Rod Holland's oldest child disappeared leaving his backpack on the front steps of a church After years of drug abuse Mark had become schizophrenic and was wandering the streets like a zombie Four months later, police discovered his body, and his family was plunged into the depths of unrelenting grief. Why? Why me? Why this? That's my biggest question. Is why? Mark was our firstborn. He was a happy, full of wonder little boy. There was a lot of delight in Mark. He loved the world. He fell in love with Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings story. He had a real active, imaginative mind. It just it changed him. Wonder and imagination just vanished. It seemed like it just shut him down and shut all the light out of his eyes in a lot of ways. And everything became about that obsession. We take away anything we found that were his sources, and we locked the computers the best we could, and we made rules. We made ground rules, and they were broken and over and over and over again. He took on a very, very combative nature, and it was him against the world and him against us. And every step of the way, where I had to take a hard stand, I had to close off a portion of my heart. Help me to love him was my biggest prayer. God, I am having a hard time loving this boy, my own son. I'm having a hard time loving him. God was faithful to remind me he is in my son's life and he loves him more than I ever could imagine. It was hard because over time it felt like we were losing him. We had tried everything, and in every case, I thought I had hope. So at every step, I thought, well, he surely won't push it to the point where he has to leave the home. But he did. He flunked out of school. He was even stealing from us at some point to get money to buy drugs. I had no question about what I had to do. There was nothing repentant about him. By the time he turned 18, I said, "You're going to have to leave. Never ceases to be your son, and that's the hardest part. That's what makes it so hard. It was hurting me." But I had to let him live with the consequences of what he chose to do. He was like a zombie, and wandering the streets at night, and, and stepping out in traffic. And he disappeared. I remember having to go down and look for him, and, and not finding him. And how do you how do you deal with that? That's where I felt the lowest. I had no plan. We didn't think he was going to stay or make it, but he did. By God's grace, he stayed. And after a few months, he actually made a strong commitment to the Lord and was baptized. We saw light in his eyes. We had. Not seen in a long, long time. We are so encouraged. He called us a few times. Sometimes up, I can do this. Sometimes cry, and I'm a loser. I should have never left. 
But I told him, I said, honey, God is a God of second chances. And you can do this. I love you. We love you. Jesus is with you. Just don't forget that. And he said, I love you, Mom, and he hung up. the question of why didn't you stop him you know you could I know you could you're the God of our hearts right you can call us out of darkness why not I remember our pastor at Mark's memorial service said you may ask the question where was Jesus when Mark took his life when he took those pills, he said, I would suggest to you that he was there. And he caught him when he fell. It took him home to be with him. We were all together as a family to receive that call. And it allowed us to grieve together as a family. The kids, they could see us grieve together about it and grieve in faith and grieve in trusting God. Each in their own way came to faith and that they'll see him again, they'll see Mark again. I know that God loved him all the way up to the end. I know that I can trust him with my children and I know that what he does is right and good. What went through my mind was, really, God? I don't understand why. What he's shown me is that when he takes away, he gives something better in return. Because he's given me himself in the, all the losses that I've gone through, I have sought him and I found him. As I learned to thank God every day for the little things and for the things that I had left, it gave me joy. I began to understand what James meant when he said, count it all joy, brothers, when you go through trials of many kinds. How can you otherwise recognize God's goodness in every part of your life? I thank God that even though I've lost part of my hearing, I can still hear birdsong. And I thank God that I can still look through my camera and see his beauty. I have a husband who loves me and cares for me. I have three beautiful children and now two grandsons and another on the way. I have a church body that came around us during the time of Mark's death that just blew us away with their love. How can I not be grateful? I find that I fall in love with the pottery when I make it. I can put my thumb in it and it shows. I can put a stamp in it, it shows that pattern. And then I cut it off the wheel and I set it aside and it dries. And it's not soft and pliable anymore. And it's hard and it's kind of lifeless. And then when it comes through the final firing, it's just like, 
wow, it takes on a whole new life. There is almost a pathway of death and rebirth in that whole process that I think is reflected in what we've come through in a lot of ways. What each one of us goes through as God brings us through death really into new life in, in Him, and it's His work, and He brings you forth into something that really, really glorifies Him. I love capturing light. I love the way God has created light and the way it filters through things, the way it changes colors, and the way the landscape changes. I get up in the mornings and I look out and the first thing I see is a sunrise. It's just a constant reminder of his faithfulness. Every day the sun rises, he's there. Every day he's with me. He never fails, never, ever fails.